busier, so like this is a way to try to just character. be able to do it on my free time, you know. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now, not all of it is about her as a person. I will say my views on her, but this is mainly a Georgia, right? So, character. here's the thing. People go on... ...dropped out. She ran uncontested. Things like that, right? But at the same time, here, here's something to consider, right? She still won her election. Now, I'm not a big fan of some of the extreme things that Marjorie Taylor Greene says, but at the same time, she won her election, and I'm not going to just sit here and say, hey, you know, she won her election, so we need to over, we just need to overturn what the voters in her district have decided, because we don't like her, and that's what it comes off as, as the Democrats are trying to do. Because it was Democrats in a different people on the city, right? So, I figure if they're the ones who brought that suit, they're trying to do it because, let's look at her district realistically, okay? It's a very, very, very Republican advantage district. And I saw this happening with Trump with the impeachment, with mainly the first impeachment, not the second where it was blatantly obvious they were trying to impeach him because they knew they couldn't. I mean, COVID changed things, honestly. COVID was a big changer in terms of stuff. But here's the thing that they did. They sat up here and they were trying to impeach him because they weren't sure whether or not they could beat him. That's straight up what it was. They thought they didn't know if they could beat him or not. So they tried to impeach him. Now, the impeachment in the House was a success. You know, the Senate obviously let it go. We know about that. But this, I think, highlights a bigger issue, actually, with Democrats. And this is the kind of thing that has enabled people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and like Lauren Boebert to come into the prominence that they have. Is you have people who talk about how they're democratic and how these people are anti-democratic and things like that, right? But the way I see it is when you've got people that are trying to get you off the ballot or to impeach you, you know, yeah, these people may have done something wrong or whatever, but that's why they should be. That's and yeah, Democrats are using it as an excuse. But when you're trying to do something and your motive for doing it is because you know you can't beat them or because you're doubtful of your ability to beat them, that comes off to me as very undemocratic, right? It, that's just to me. That's my opinion. I do find that to be undemocratic, though, to sit here and try to impeach somebody because you don't know if you can beat them. Like, I don't, I don't get down with that. Like, I don't think that's right. You know, like, like, she won the election. She won her seat. And now, I personally believe that despite what she's done, it's up to the voters in her district to determine whether or not she should be. Now, it was a small fringe group of Democrat voters in her district. When I say let the voters decide, what I'm saying is this. Wait for the election, wait for the midterms. If they want her out, they'll vote, her district will vote her out. It's not the place of the Democrat party to tell people who they want running in their party. To tell people who should be allowed and who shouldn't be allowed to be on a ballot, right? These voters are doing this, and this is a national thing. Democrats have been doing this kind of shit nationally, and that's you know that's really something that bothers me about the Democrats. They they talk about how democratic they are. They call themselves the Democrat Party, and yet they're involved in doing such undemocratic things as trying to overrule what voters in her district did. Democrats are a majority, are, okay, they are not a majority in her district, okay? 
Her district has a, if I remember right, it was a 45 point Republican advantage. Okay, the wheel of fate so is turning. you Rebel can't really say that Democrats are trying to do the right thing for her voters by doing this. Let them decide, right? Let them decide. And when it comes to, now I'm gonna get on somebody else here too, Lauren Bowler, okay? I mean, She's an example of what this kind of Democrat behavior is enabled, right? Lauren Boebert's a perfect, so is Marjorie Taylor Greene, but Lauren Boebert is the perfect, perfect example of what they've enabled, right? With how they are about trying to shoot people down, silence people they don't agree with, this is the kind of shit that causes people like Lauren Boebert to get elected. People who come in and their one goal is to troll the left. Because that's what it comes off as to me. Is Lauren Boebert just wants to troll the left. And Marjorie Taylor Greene does. She does. She does too. But like, you got people coming in because their entire objective is to troll the left. So, why do you think people like that are able to get in? Do you think it's because of their policies? No. It's because, you know what? People, I mean, people have gotten sick of the left in general. Like, it's been, independence of it falling out, Biden's approval is just, he's got a lower approval than Trump did at his worst. And in terms of history, Trump had probably the, second lowest approval rating in history besides Nixon when he got impeached, right? And Biden's doing worse than that. You know, you get... And then, of course, instead of Democrats looking at what they've done, they're trying to get... They're just trying to remove people from the ballot. And, like, why? And it's just... A lot of it just gets to me sometimes, like, you know, one thing I'll say about Democrats is they're very hypocritical, very, very, very hypocritical party right there, and it's hard for me to take anything that they say seriously, and then on top of that, it's basically rules for us, but not for you with them, right? So. Rebel you remember when one. Trump was in office? Action. Democrats used the filibuster over 300 times. You can look this up too. This is actual number. Democrats used the filibuster against Trump over 300 times. In fact, they used the filibuster more against him than against all prior presidents combined. Again, this is challenger. literal historical fact. You can look this up if you don't believe me. Now, all of a sudden, Democrats get in and Republicans. And they haven't used it near as much as Democrats have during Trump's presidency. And Democrats want to get rid of the filibuster because now it's no longer convenient for them. You see that? Now, they can't get rid of the filibuster because there's Democrats that are not for doing it, mainly Manchin and Cinema. And what does that party do? They sit here now, they've been trying to use Manchin and Cinema as a whipping boy scapegoat for their own failures to get their policy back for their own failure to do what Biden ran on a platform of doing, which is being able to get conservatives to actually vote in line with his policy. Biden failed at that, which is literally what he ran on. And instead of acknowledging that, Democrats would rather just sit up and blame Manchin and blame Senate. And, you know, I'm gonna tie it all back in now. It's because of things like that, which is why people like Marjorie Taylor Greene were able to win. The wheel of fate because you know what, people, Rebel I mean, I at least see it this way for myself, you know, both parties are absolutely full of shit, right? However, even though both parties are full of shit, Democrats are so, Democrats are far more full of shit in that, here's how I consider it, right? Is you get Democrats who, okay, 
I see, I see it like this. It's like the wolf and the fox, okay? Like, Republicans are the wolf. They'll show you their teeth. They'll tell you who they are. They'll tell you what they intend, right? Whereas Democrats are the fox. Now, the fox is clever. The fox is sly. He's sneaky. He'll deceive you, right? Rebel one. The Republicans, they don't give a shit. They, you know, if they're being, if they're openly being shit bags, they'll tell you straight up, yeah, we're being shit bags, right? Democrats won't do that. If you tell Democrats they're a shit bag, first thing they're gonna do is, well, what about Trump? January 6th, Trump. January 6th, Trump. January 6th, Trump. That's all you hear from now. January 6th, Trump. January 6th. Now, me per, now I'm gonna say something about that actually. I personally don't give a shit about January 6th, okay? There was last year, this entire January 6th committee that we have in our Congress has accomplished absolutely nothing, right? It's accomplished absolutely nothing except for being a waste of taxpayer dollars. Nothing is going to come out of it. If nothing has come out of it yet, nothing is going to come out of it in the end either, okay? This is just like the Mueller investigation where it was all this time put into it and it accomplished absolutely nothing. Okay, this is what's costing Democrats the fucking, this is what's going to cost them the midterms is all this January 6th, right? Because instead of focusing on actual problems in this country, they're here focused on January 6th. And it's not helpful at all. Not one bit. And, you know, they don't think anything of this, they think... They think that this screen January 6th Trump, January 6th Trump is a fucking campaign. And it's not. Okay? It's not a campaign. It's not a platform. Okay? It, it gets to the point where Democrats have basically been running on a platform for the past, I, well, I can definitely say in my lifetime, at least 32 years. I'm 32, so... At least for the entire time I've been alive, Democrats have been running basically on a platform of vote for us because we're not the other guy. Well, here's how I see that. The way I see it is when you tell me to vote for you because the other side is worse, what that comes off as to me is you telling me to buy a bag of pork chips because you claim it stinks like a cow. Well, the way I see it is that a bag of chips is a bag of chips regardless of what kind of animal it comes from and regardless of where it comes from. And I'm not going to sit here and vote for your party just because you say the other party is worse. At that point, I'm just going to, I'm not going to vote for either one, right? You know, I'm not going to buy either bag of shit. I'm not going to vote for either party because, okay, if you're telling me I got to vote for you because they're worse, then what, okay, what the hell does that do for me then? Honestly, what the hell does that do for me? Okay, if I'm fucked either way, why would I vote for either one of you if I'm fucked either way? And that, that's probably the biggest thing to me that really just blows my mind about this Democrat platform is, like, I just don't get why I'd vote for you when all you have is telling me how shitty they are. Tell me how good you are. Tell me what you're gonna do and then do it, okay? Tell me what you're gonna do and then do it. But here's the thing, Democrats tell you what they're gonna do and then they don't do it. That's what makes you so bad. They don't do it, okay? Republicans, at least I can say that, when they say they're going to do something policy-wise, they find a way to pull it off. They do. Say what you want about their, their abortion shit. You know what? They wanted the courts to rule in their favor finally. It, they finally did it, right? Republicans wanted to... Every time Republicans say they're gonna do something, or it's a policy goal of theirs, even whenever Democrats get, in, get any kind of majority or anything, they can't seem to get what they want done. And, okay, first it was Joe Lieberman that got blamed for things. Now it's Joe Manchin. Now it's Kirsten Cinema. That's all it is now. They bank they sit here and blame the other person. And they sit here and blame those within their own party and use them as a scapegoat. So when Democrats have even majority, they blame someone in their own party. 
right? And they always scapegoat someone. When they don't have the majority, they say, give us majority so we can do this because we're because Republicans are worse. Give us majority, we can do this. And then when they get the and then even when they get majority, even when they get majority, they blame the filibuster. Then when they can't get rid of the filibuster, despite having majority, they get they go and blame people in their party because people in their party wants things to be done the right way because they're like, no, we need to work together in Congress, right? Because if you like Manchin and Cinema have not fallen completely in line with what Democrats' platform is, they have not, right? And that's because you got to keep this in mind. Manchin and Cinema are both in Republican heavy areas, right? They have different types of constituents the than the majority Rebel of Democrat one. politicians. Action. Because they have a different type of voter base there, guess what that means that Manchin and Cinema are on? They have to be a little more partisan than, say, the Democrats would be. I mean, sorry. They have to be a little, you know, not so much on just, it has to be this way, like what Democrats have been doing. Right? Democrats can, their voter base is usually larger cities, and it's generally more in line, right? Whereas you get Manchin and Cinema, who are in Republican states that voted Democrat. So these are Democrats that actually won those Republican constituents. If it weren't for those two Democrats, Democrats would not have House and Senate majority. Mitch McConnell would still be the Senate majority leader. So blaming Manchin and Cinema is ridiculous. Okay. And I... You know, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, people are wrong. I'm not going to say that people are wrong in their criticisms of Mansion and Cinema. That's their own opinion. If they think those people should fall in line with the party more, that that's fine. I respect your opinion, right? But that doesn't mean I agree with it. And I think when you have people that give you that Maybe the party should try to go more towards the stances of Manchin and Cinema because clearly they're able to win over Republican constituents in their state despite being Democrats. And if Democrats want to get rid of people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, you do that by winning her election, right? By winning the election against them. Maybe that's something Democrats should consider is going down the route of having a more conservative Democrat instead of a more conservative, instead of, I mean, really, if they actually were smart, if they wanted to, they could come in with a more conservative Democrat and actually have a chance. But that would require bucking away from a lot of the extreme policy that many of them are pushing, and it would also require the party to actually look at flaws in how it operates. Now, the Republican Party has flaws too, okay? The Republican Party does too, you know, in that they are not as considerate overall of what, they're just like Democrats, but they go about it different, honestly. You know, I, I'll say, some of my thoughts for a while is like this, okay, Demo the only difference between Democrats and Republicans is that Democrats use, Democrats use a credit card, no, sorry, Democrats use a checkbook, while as Republicans use a credit card, okay, Democrats checkbook, Republicans credit card, and either way, the spending is shit. Either way, the spending is shit, right? But it's always that. It's always shitty spending. And all this money that our government is spending, most of it doesn't even go to us citizens, right? Most of it doesn't even go to us. Hell, right now we got billions of dollars going into Ukraine that should be going to our own citizens instead of to Ukraine. We've got multiple billions of... Actually, no, more than that. We have trillions of dollars that invested in helping subsidize European security in general with NATO, right? We put so much to that, and we're here subsidizing their security. They get universal health care. 
they get all of these things and yet we can't get that because I mean we could I mean realistically the US could afford it but instead of the United States actually supporting those kinds of policies to help our citizens we're sitting here giving billions and billions and billions of dollars in foreign aid to other countries we're sitting here spending trillions of dollars on our military to subsidize European security right instead of taking care of our own citizens now if Republicans ran more on a platform like that, they'd be able to sweep off Democrat voters too, right? They'd be able to sweep off Democrat voters. However, Republicans have jammed themselves up too by throwing out the word socialism way more than they should, right? Everything is socialist. Yeah. I swear, everything is socialist. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be something that's actually socialist or not. But to them, it is. And that's something that I think should be worked on with that party too. Is I mean, I get it. It's worked for a very long time to brand Democrats as socialists. Okay, honestly, you know what? I wouldn't say that Democrats are... I mean, there's some socialists within the Democrat party. You know, like AOC. If she's a... I mean, yeah. Okay? Just, yeah. The Ilhan Wheel Omar, yeah. Turning. Okay? Level I get it. One. But... Action. At the same time, you got to keep in mind that it's when you use some when you use a term like socialism so freely. What ends up happening here is that you use the term too free, and where do we get with people like this? Usually refute it and be like, "I am not a socialist," and. Now, because that person has been able to counter that, now what do you have? Because Democrats use smear tactics too. Democrats use smear tactics, but they don't use a smear tactic that's very specific like socialism. No, they just blanketly throw out racism, sexism, boom, 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 because those are blanket the things that can apply to anything and they're hard to refute Rebel once you get one. those thrown at you. Action. They can be very hard to deal with. Whereas Republicans, on the other hand, I'm sorry, but calling somebody a socialist in a lot of cases can be very easily refuted. And it's just that that term has actually poisoned our politics really bad. Like, socialism is, as a term has literally poisoned American politics. And it's that's if we got a Republican who stopped running and campaigning as some kind of campaign against socialism and ran just as a full on, hey, look, we have this going on in our country. We're giving this much money. We're doing it. Now, Trump said a lot of that, too, but Trump didn't say it right. You get what I mean? Trump didn't really say it right. Trump had problems with how he said shit. And he was. He was too rough with how he said things. But if we had somebody who came in like, hey, look, we got all our problems here. We've got millions upon millions of citizens living in poverty right now. And yet here we are, we're giving all this money to Ukraine. We're giving money to third world countries. We're giving money, we're spending trillions of dollars in military spending to try and help subsidize European security. Okay, all that going on. And see, if we had a Republican who who came in and was actually just talking like that, I think they'd be able to Democrat voters and everything. Because they'd be talking about, hey, we could be affording universal health care. We could have all of this. All we need to do is cut down on all this helping other countries and getting absolutely nothing in return for it. We're ignoring our own citizens. If we stopped ignoring our citizens, and actually started helping our own citizens instead of the other countries around the world, we'd be fine. We'd be a lot better off. And with that, you know, I think that should about cover everything I got to say. Um, so if there's any comments, please feel free to leave them. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.